Britain's fauna used to be very different from today. Travel far enough back in time, and you would have come face to face with the likes of brown bears, wolves, and bison. Even further back, you would have walked amongst woolly rhinos, woolly mammoths, and saber-toothed cats. But there is one animal that died out not so long ago, a more elusive animal that once called Britain its home, the Eurasian lynx. Today, this medium-sized cat is widely distributed throughout northern, central, and eastern Europe, Central Asia, Siberia, the Tibetan Plateau, and the Himalayas. It is considered a species of least concern on the IUCN Red List, but none survive in Britain. Here we ask the question, why are there no lynxes in Britain? Paleontologists have found bones from limestone caves that suggest the Eurasian lynx was once widespread across Britain. They were thought to have died out around 1,300 years ago, although some believe that they lived in the remote areas of Scotland for much longer. During the last ice age, Britain was connected to mainland Europe via a land bridge called Doggerland. Many of continental Europe's fauna migrated westwards into Britain during this time. The migrations were two-way dispersal events. However, when the Ice Age came to an end, the ice retreated, the sea levels rose, and the land bridge became submerged. The species that had made it into Britain became isolated from the rest of Europe. That included the Eurasian lynx. The medium-sized cat has reddish-brown fur with black spots along its back and a white underbelly. Its paws are large, furry, and webbed to help it walk on snow and it has a bobtail and black tips to its ears. They are mostly nocturnal or crepuscular, hunting during dusk and dawn. They can walk up to 12 miles in a single night, patrolling their territory in search of food. During the day, they hide in dense thickets and are rarely seen by humans due to their secretive nature. All those years ago, they were at home in Britain. The small island offered them the right habitat and plenty of prey for them to thrive. Radiocarbon dating has pinpointed the lynxes to have roamed Britain before the 6th century AD, but by this time, their population was beginning to take a hit from human activity. They survived in Scotland until medieval times, between 1000 and 1500 AD, and possibly later. Whenever they died out in Britain, the cause was not a natural one. Their loss was not due to climatic pressures, as was the case with other species but it was the direct result of human activities. They were hunted and persecuted, and their habitats were destroyed. The way in which lynxes hunt requires a significant amount of tree cover. They do not pursue prey over great distances across open plains. Instead, they are ambush hunters and rely on the cover of undergrowth to stalk close to their prey before pouncing on them. As Britain chopped down its trees, the essential habitat that the lynx relied on for food was lost. Shortly after the last ice age, most of Britain was covered in largely broadleaf forest. By medieval times, around the year 1066, this had reduced to just 15% cover, and by 1900, only 5% of Britain's forests remained. The rate at which trees were felled to make way for farming and pasture meant that the lynxes couldn't adapt their hunting strategies to find food elsewhere. So, what do lynxes hunt? They mostly take down small, ungulate prey, with roe deer being their favorite food. An individual lynx may kill as many as 60 roe deer each year. However, despite being solitary hunters, they are also capable of taking down much larger prey, especially when roe deer are in short supply and smaller animals are scarce during winter. In parts of Scandinavia, particularly where roe deer are less abundant, Lynxes regularly feed on introduced white-tailed deer and domesticated reindeer. Both these species are considerably larger than the lynx and pose a significant threat during the hunt. However, invariably, the risk pays off. In the Alps, lynxes frequently take down the goat antelope known as the chamois. There has been long debate in Britain about whether to reintroduce the Eurasian lynx. Unlike species that never lived on British shores, the lynx was once part of the landscape, and therefore, there is an ethical argument for bringing it back. Rewilding parts of Britain is a hot topic at the moment, as conservationists strive to undo some of the damage that has been done to the natural landscape. 
but this takes considerable planning. And there are, of course, concerns about reintroducing the lynx. People are not familiar with living alongside a predator in Britain, as they are in other parts of the world. The thought of having a medium-sized cat roaming the countryside strikes fear in the minds of many, particularly those who have small children. But education about this shy and relatively small animal could go some way to dispelling those fears. Those in favor of reintroducing this lost species highlight the benefits of doing so. Parts of Scotland are overrun with both red and roe deer. These animals wreak havoc on conifer plantations and overbrowse certain species. They can cause significant economic losses. At the moment, a feeble attempt at controlling deer numbers involves hunting them, but there are far too many for this activity to make a difference. In Switzerland, they brought the numbers down significantly in the region they were released into. Over the years, the deer learned how to evade the predators more effectively, and their range spread. Having a less concentrated deer population in one single area reduced the damage the browsing deer were having on the flora. The lynxes followed the dispersing deer populations, and they too became more widespread. Furthermore, the carcasses of the deer left behind by the lynxes had noticeable benefits to the invertebrates in the woodlands and other animals that fed on the remains. These benefits are lost when the deer are simply hunted by people. The same benefits found in Switzerland could also be achieved in Britain if lynxes were reintroduced in a sensible manner. There would be plenty of prey for the cats to feed on, particularly in Scotland. Even though they also hunt hares, rabbits, and other small mammals, as well as birds, their preference for deer is clear. The reintroduction of other lost species to Britain, such as the European brown bear and the wolf, has also been up for debate. But these animals both pose a much greater threat to humans than the lynx. At 20 kilograms or 44 pounds, standing at just 65 centimeters or 25 inches at the shoulder, lynxes have never been recorded as attacking people. They are typically wary of humans and shy away from any encounters. They are an elusive species for this very reason. In European countries where they live, farmers rarely report attacks on livestock by lynxes. The only farm animals that are taken tend to be sheep and lambs. Lynxes do not hunt cattle or their calves. Sheep in Scotland graze in open pastures, whilst deer are found mostly in forested regions. The lynxes are more likely to prey upon species amongst the trees, and less so in the open. This has been shown to be the case in Norway, where despite large numbers of sheep, some of which are taken by lynxes, the main prey source for the cats is roe deer. Sheep would be easier for lynxes to hunt, but their preferred hunting grounds in the forest mean that deer are most often taken. So, their introduction into Britain is less likely to cause problems compared to bears or wolves. Also, lynxes have been reintroduced to other countries in Europe, namely Switzerland, France, Germany, Italy, Austria, Slovenia, Poland, and the Czech Republic. Many of these programs have been successful, and lessons could be learned for Britain. Introducing an apex predator such as the lynx could also prove economically beneficial for the tourism industry. In Harz National Park in Germany, their website invites visitors to experience the incredible wilderness in the kingdom of the lynx. It attracts people who hope for a glimpse of the wild cat and its natural habitat. The same could be true for Britain. As with so many species across Britain and the rest of the world, destruction of habitat and overhunting have caused the local extinction of the Eurasian lynx in Britain. But maybe this is one extinction we could reverse. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.